The best spooky stories are those that are true. They are the ones that make you lie there at night with the covers pulled up to your nose, straining to hear every crack of the house. The ones that make you toss and turn, but eventually sleep with your back facing the wall so that nothing can sneak up behind you. Well, things are about to get scary because here are seven eerie stories that are all based on real life events. This video has been brought to you by manscaped.com, the leading global brand that cracks the case on how men across the world have been keeping their personal grooming on point. Manscaped.com have sent us an all-in-one performance package, which is an incredible combination of the best grooming tools and products to help you feel great all day long. We know it's spooky season right now, but Christmas is just around the corner, and this would make the perfect gift for your partner, or you could always treat yourself. Personal grooming is an important part of taking care of yourself. Included as part of the package is the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Trimmer. They're both fully waterproof and come with advanced skin safe technology, meaning you'll get a closer shave without risking nicking or cutting sensitive skin. The Lawnmower Body Trimmer has a handy feature that keeps your trimmer safe, with a travel lock that stops any accidents before they can happen. Next up are a couple of handy products that will help you keep fresh all day long that we'd like to mention. The Crop Reserver Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray. You can apply the deodorant down below after your shower for all day odor protection and then use the convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera wherever you need a little boost. We're very grateful to be partnering with such a great brand and as a token to all of you, manscaped.com are offering two free gifts as well for a limited time only. You can get the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Shorts if you go to manscaped.com today to take advantage of their generous offer. Use our code top 5s at the checkout to get everything I mention at 20% off plus free international shipping and your two free gifts. With Manscaped, you're always going to feel your best. The Haunted Attic Reddit user Digsaw recalled how he moved into a one-bedroom apartment in a 1930s building in Melbourne, Australia. After a couple of months, Diggs came home one day to find a wooden board on the floor broken into two pieces. It was at least an inch thick and had been used to cover a hole in the bathroom ceiling, which led to a small attic space. Extremely afraid that someone was up there, Diggs was hoping that the landlord had arranged to have some work done. Diggs emailed photos to the landlord and was asked to call her straight away. She said she wasn't doing any work in the attic and her last two tenants had the same problem with the bathroom ceiling. She replaced the board. A month later, as Diggs lay in bed, he was awoken at 4am with a horrible feeling. There was a noise from up in the attic of something being dragged. There was definitely something up there. Diggs turned on the light and after plucking up enough courage went into the bathroom. He found the new board there on the floor broken in two. But there was something else, the sound of children whispering. The same phrase was being repeated over and over again. It's your turn. It's your turn. Terrified, Diggs turned on every light and watched TV to calm down, but his pet budgie Dexter, who was kept in the kitchen, began squawking. Stressed out, Diggs went outside to sit in the car and chill out until the sun came up. On returning to the apartment, Dexter was missing from his cage. Diggs found him in the toilet bowl, splashing around for dear life. After washing him and drying him, Diggs rang the landlord. Oh wow, she said, you heard the whispering too. Diggs stayed in the apartment for over a year and heard the whispering several times. After moving out, the landlord rang to say that the new tenants would really like to speak to Diggs about the freaky things that were happening in the apartment. Number 17, The Room of Terror. Close to the botanical gardens in a charming area of Edinburgh, Scotland, was a neat little row of houses. Very early in the 20th century, a couple bought number 17, for some unknown reason, the house had been empty for several years, and the enterprising couple were able to bag themselves a bargain with the hope of turning the attractive property into a boarding house. Once they had moved in, it wasn't long before the couple noticed that there was a strange and unpleasant atmosphere in one of the attic rooms. No one wanted to even enter the chamber, let alone stay there. It always felt as though someone or something was in the room, watching. One young girl, who was working as the housekeeper, entered the attic only to come running straight back out again, screaming and crying hysterically. She passed out from the shock of the experience, and once she had been revived, no amount of coaxing could persuade her to explain what it was that she had been so terrified by. 
Not long after, word spread around the city about the goings-on at number 17, or the boarding house, as it became known. Students from Edinburgh University began to dare one another to go and stay there. One of these students was a young man named Andrew Muir. He was highly religious, but also interested in the spiritual side of matters. Andrew approached the owners of the house and offered to spend a night in the attic room in order to carry out a controlled experiment. Rumours about the house had spread throughout Edinburgh, and the owners were losing business as no one wanted a lodge at a haunted house, so they were delighted by Andrew's offer. It meant they could finally put an end to the affair. They gave Andrew a bell, and he was told that if he saw or heard anything unusual, that he should immediately ring the bell. The residents of number 17 bade Andrew good night and good luck before retiring to bed. Andrew was left alone to carry out his vigil in the uninviting attic room. It was during the early hours of the morning that the noise of the bell being frantically rung and a piercing scream of horror ripped through the silence. Everybody jumped from their beds and rushed upstairs to the attic to find out what was causing all of the commotion. The door was flung open to find the body of Andrew laying dead on the floor, the bell at his side. A look of wretched terror was on his face. It would seem that the poor lad had seen something so terrifying that it had literally frightened him to death. The attic room was never used again, and the whole row of houses was demolished some 20 years later. The Boy With No Eyes Another Reddit user, named Commendo4, told a tale about his meeting with a spectral boy. When he was about 10, he was awoken in the middle of the night by the opening of his bedroom door. As he lay there, he felt someone sit down on his bed beside him. He thought that it was his mother as he felt the bed sink down under the person's weight and something touching his leg. But when he opened his eyes, it wasn't his mother, it was a boy, and there were empty black sockets where his eyes should have been. The boy was about Commendo's own age, and he held out his hand, which held a small box. Although he was shocked, Commendo reached out to take it, but the apparition pulled it back. Again, Commendo reached for the box and said, give it. Then he blinked, and the boy had gone when he opened his eyes, but the imprint of where he had been seated on the bed still remained. Five years later, Komodo's girlfriend was at his house, so that they could study together. Whilst waiting for her parents to pick her up, she fell asleep. On their arrival, Commendo woke his girlfriend up. She sat up suddenly and opened her eyes. Pointing at the corner of the room, she immediately lay down and went back to sleep. Commendo woke her again and told her what she had done. She explained that she had seen a little boy up on the wall like Spider-Man staring at me with no eyes. Commendo was completely freaked out and told her the story of his meeting with the boy when he was younger. Another five years later, Commendo and his girlfriend were still a couple, and they also had a two-year-old little girl together. They lived at Commendo's parents' house in his old room. His daughter started to wake up at the same time every night and began talking. When Commendo asked who she was talking to, she said, it was a nice little boy who was lost and looking for his mummy. The ghostly visitations continued until the family were able to get a house of their own. Spirit Creatures One night during the 1960s, two men were travelling back along the A75 road by car to Annan in Scotland one night. It was late and the road was very quiet. About 10 miles out, the driver noticed an old woman waving frantically. She could be seen clearly in the headlights and was standing in the centre of the road. Just as the driver was about to swerve to avoid hitting her and knocking her down, she vanished. The two men were then stunned to see several figures emerging from out of the dark and rushing directly towards the car. These figures seemed to be mostly animals of all kinds, dogs, cats, cattle. Some even seemed to be unrecognisable and fantastical. At the centre of this menagerie, there appeared the shape of an old man. His long white hair flowed out behind him as he ran, and his mouth was wide open in a silent scream. The driver swerved right and left across the road, trying to avoid the strange creatures, and realised that none of them were actually touching the car. Was he just imagining it all? Glancing at his passenger, who he could see was equally terrified, made him realise that he was not hallucinating. Suddenly the temperature in the car plummeted, and the driver felt himself losing control of the steering wheel. Something was trying to take over the driving. Despite the cold, both men felt as though they were suffocating. As the passenger wound down his window, from outside the men could hear ominous sounds of cackling and shrieking. 
The driver stopped the car and it began to rock from side to side quite violently. Unable to stand it any longer, they both opened their car doors and got out. Everything was still. All they could hear was the rustling of the wind through the trees and the gasping of their own panicked breathing. Once they had calmed down and wanting desperately to get home, the two men got back in the car, but no sooner had the driver started the engine than the animals returned, swarming the vehicle. Determined to get through them, the, the driver pressed on despite the strange and scary noises. Getting nearer to home, they were comforted to see the headlights of another vehicle on the road. As they drew nearer though, they realized that the large van wasn't moving and they were going to crash straight into it. The driver pressed down hard on the brakes, but it refused to work. Both men held their breath as they waited for impact, but the van just disappeared into thin air, along with the animals and the old man. Everything was quiet and the road was empty. Exhausted from their ghostly encounter, the two men quickly made their way home. The Basement This story was told by Manny from the Canadian podcast No Inner Monologue, which is a great listen. When he was a young boy, his family didn't have a lot of money, so along with his uncle, they took on extra work to make ends meet. They worked the night shift together, cleaning the Keg Steakhouse restaurant near to the airport in Toronto. Because his parents didn't have anyone to look after him, while they were at work, they often took him with them. The job was quite easy, and it was well paid, but an incident that occurred one night, along with other supernatural occurrences, meant Manny's parents soon quit. Manny, who was about 11 at the time, and his uncle's girlfriend was sitting at a table near the bar. It was very early in the morning, around 3.30 a.m. All of the lights were on, and Manny could hear his father and his uncle talking together in the distance about a recent soccer game. Manny and his uncle's girlfriend were just passing the time with general chit-chat, when, as usually happened, they both fell asleep. Suddenly, they were awoken by Manny's uncle. Quick, wake up, he said. We need to get to the basement. Your mum needs help moving some stuff. Hurry, it's urgent. The pair quickly got up and went to gather their things. When Manny looked up, his uncle was a good 20 feet away when he shouted back, You have to hurry, it's urgent. They were both a bit freaked out by how insistent he was being. By now, Manny's uncle had disappeared from view. They walked in the direction that he had gone, so that they could follow him to the basement. But as they turned the corner of the corridor, they bumped into him coming in the opposite direction. He looked absolutely horrified to see them. Manny asked, what's going on? Where's the emergency? His uncle replied, you two. Your dad yelled that you were locked in the basement and he couldn't open up the door. He told me to go to the car and get the crowbar to force it open. No, Manny said. You just woke us up and told us to follow you to the basement because mum needed some help. That's impossible, said Manny's uncle. Your dad and I both heard you yelling for help in the basement as we went past. Then Manny's dad arrived, wondering where his brother was with the crowbar. When he saw Manny and his brother's girlfriend, he went mad at them, telling them, That's not funny, trying to scare us like that. He asked, How did you get out? They explained what had happened, and the four of them were standing in the corridor looking puzzled. When Manny's mother came running over, she was upset and said that there was someone trapped inside the basement, and that they needed help to get out. You can imagine the pure terror as everyone realized that there was someone or something trying to split up the family and lure each one of them down into the basement. The family got out of there as quickly as they could and after a couple more frightening and unexplained incidents, Manny's mum, dad and uncle stopped working at the restaurant. Andrew Mackey's Poltergeist. Mackey was a farmer in Kirkwood, Brightshire what began one winter's night in February 1695 became known as one of the most violent episodes of poltergeist infestation on record and terrorized both the Mackey family and their Scottish community. The story was documented in detail by the Reverend Andrew Telfair, the local vicar. On a February night, Mackey went to his barn to check on his cattle, as usual, but found all the livestock running around loose. Bewildered, he tied them back up carefully before going to bed. The next night he found them untied once again, but the following morning, one of the cows was suspended from the roof of the cattle shed by its rope. Then things began to happen in the Mackey house. A basket of peat for the fire appeared inside the house, upturned and piled up in a heap. It had also been set alight. If the smell of smoke had not awakened the family, there could have been a disaster. 
In March, the house was showered by a barrage of stones. It started with small pebbles, seeming to appear from nowhere and hitting the building, but the stones soon increased both in number and in size. Not only was the house hit, but also the occupants of the family. Inside, kitchen tools, bed covers, and furniture moved on their own. A figure appeared in the corner of the room, huddled in a blanket, which scared the life out of the children. When someone was brave enough to pull back the cover, it turned out to be an upturned stool. Outside, the stones became even bigger, and members of the family, along with anyone who came to call, were black and blue with bruising. There was a continual onslaught of banging, knocking, and door slamming. In April, two ministers prayed with the family, which made things worse. They were beaten by sticks held by invisible hands, and random fires began to break out. Some bones were found on the property and taken away for burial, but the trouble only increased. Prayers went on for three days, with more fires spontaneously occurring, and stones crashing through the roof. It was a good two weeks later when the family experienced the presence of a large black entity in the barn, which, after terrifying the Mackies, just seemed to dissipate, and then everything returned to normal. No one ever found out what it was that tormented the Mackie family for three horrifying months in 1695. Shadow Man We'll finish with the story of security guard Raul Arguello. He worked at the Thomas Aldafo Duco Soccer Stadium in Buenos Aires, Argentina in April of 2018. Someone was repeatedly opening and then slamming the dressing room door and Raoul wanted to catch the culprit in the act. He had already been down there three times and found no one there, so on the fourth trip, he took his mobile phone with him to record the strange goings on. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to film it to show people later on, so they believe it when I tell them, because this has never happened to me before. It's terrifying, Raoul said. From a distance, we can hear the muffled sounds of the door being banged shut. But as Raoul goes further down the stairs, carrying his flashlight, the noise becomes deafening. Raoul, who is obviously scared, picks up a metal bar before edging cautiously nearer the door. He pushes open the door and bursts in, declaring, see, no one is there. As he spins around the room, we can see a shadowy figure which skitters across the screen before disappearing into the wall. Raoul didn't see the shadow man at the time, and it wasn't until he watched the video back later that he saw the horrifying presence. Take a look. Raul was supposedly so upset by the incident that he quit his job and found another security job elsewhere. And I think you'll agree that was probably the best decision. So that's seven incredibly creepy true tales of the paranormal. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to listen out for all those little noises and knocks as you fall asleep tonight. We'll see you tomorrow for another video.